everyone. This is another episode of todebate.eu. .eu because the European elections are coming up soon. And this is me, Sebastian. And my co-host is also there. Dirk, how are you? Now you're building up pressure that I release this episode early enough so I can say, go vote, <laughs> people. Go vote. <laughs> I'm good. Because the way. elections are on Sunday, correct? In the, in, well, we record today on the 14th of May. Yeah. So they're in 10 days. So that basically means I need to release this week. This week or next week. It's this fine. week or next week. Uh, yeah, math is my thing, clearly. <laughs> All right. Thank God we are not debating anything math today. Or, or, the, or the elections. Or the, uh, the, or the election, for that matter. <laughs> we are not going to... Uh, well, that's, it is kind of political what we talk about today, though. It's sensitive. Sensitive? Very sensitive. And, and controversial. Well, unlike any of our other motions <laughs> that we had in the past. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess we debate often on political stuff, business and tech. And today, actually, the conjunction of everything. Yes, that is true. That is true. So, what is our we motion have to, today? Uh, we have to add some disclaimer before we reveal the, the, the motion. Yes, um, our debating motion today strikes a little Wait. bit home. Ah, uh, ah, uh. go ahead. What? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> what you you're confusing me, Sebastian? Go ahead. Sorry, I thought I thought you disclosed uh, you you disclosed the disclaimer first before the motion. So we tease our listeners as to what's coming. I disclose the disclaimer. And then yes, I mean, you, you, you enunciate the disclaimer before disclosing the motion. That's too nuanced for me. My poor, my poor tired brain cannot really follow what you're leading to. You, you do it as you want. Yeah, you, you, were, you were saying we need to add a disclaimer. And the disclaimer is we are going to talk about a public debate that is uh, these days in the newspapers and debated a lot, actually. Um, but it's a debate that kind of strikes home for us because it's talking about a company that's in our broader industry, if you will. So if you follow the, the latest debates, uh, there has been an opinion piece uh, that, uh, that was posted at the New York Times coming from a former co-founder uh, or an ex-co-founder of Facebook calling for breaking up Facebook. And we looked at this opinion piece and thought, hey, this has all the makings we need for a good to debate episode. So, uh, yeah, this is our debating motion today, right? Should we really indeed break up Facebook? Or not we specifically, but uh, is that something that needs to be considered? <laughs> And the disclaimer is that we still work at Google, but today, and as every debate, uh, we're randomly assigned size and we're just debating for the fun of debating. We, again, flipped a coin, virtual coin this time again, to decide which sides will be each of us taking. So you will be asking and defending the fact that we should break up Facebook and I will defend Facebook. And you start the debate. So whenever you're ready. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues for the motion. Many people call Facebook the public square of the Internet age, bringing together more than 2 billion people and dominating not only public discourse these days, but also public news consumption. Is Facebook definitely one of the main players when it comes to forming opinions, making decisions, having conversations? Now, here I mentioned my number one reason why breaking up Facebook would be healthy. It's just not very democratic if you put all this discourse and conversational um, forum into the hand of one company controlled by one person. That's, by the way, the main argument the op-ed in the New York Times is making as well. In the end, it's Mark Zuckerberg calling the shots. He literally has the power to influence the algorithms that decide what we see and what we don't see, what messages are preserved and what messages are deleted. There's one example in an article where Mark Zuckerberg decided that messages or mails if you will sent through the facebook system coming from facebook executives are to be deleted and after he made that decision all the messages all the execs ever sent out 
re were removed from inboxes all over the entire system. So that literally like somebody deleting emails out of your inbox as well, if you ever had an interaction with one of these execs. That illustrates the power somebody like Mark Zuckerberg or Facebook as a general company structure has. And I would say this kind of power is a danger to not only public and free speech, It's a risk to democracy as a whole because you you hand the keys to public discourse to one company. Now, why is it that powerful? Because it dominates across three major conversational tools, Instagram, WhatsApp and Facebook as a web platform itself, the conversation of billions. And that is number one why I would consider breaking up Facebook. It's just not healthy for us. <laughs> Now it's Sebastian's turn. Let's hear his argument. Facebook is today's easy target. Facebook is, has become a scapegoat. And it's really unfair, honestly, to allow mergers to happen, like WhatsApp and Instagram, to be gobbled up by Facebook and then tell the company to break up. Like in the first place, regulation or lawmaking should be good enough so that you don't have to tell a company to then break up just after a few years. Big in itself is not necessarily a bad thing. There are obvious economies of scale in keeping things together, especially on the privacy and user protection front. Lessons can be learned from one area, they can be shared to another, and also there's a lot of investment, and, and the debate is ongoing and raging across the industry on how to protect users, and a lot of investment in terms of actual human reviewers or algorithms need to be put in place to review content and to scale across products. Also, why damage things that actually work? Why damage companies that prove successful? It's perfectly okay to build checks and balances, to have privacy boards, to have even regulation or fine companies because they make mistakes. But forcefully breaking up companies is just going against the market force and allowing for successful companies to thrive. In fact, all of the missteps that Facebook has encountered around privacy and other aspects, a breakup would not have avoided any of them. Breaking up the, the company would not have solved the privacy problem, would not have solved any election tempering uh, issues. It has nothing to do uh, with one with the other. If you want to break up something, look at other industries, the banking industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the energy industry. They've been fighting against regulation and uh, have brought a number of issues that we can debate in other debates. And that has been going on for decades Facebook is barely 20 years old, and we already want to break up something that is connecting the entire, the entire world together. In fact, even on the very same mistakes that Facebook has done on the, on the privacy front, for instance, other companies in other industries, whether it's banks or telecommunications, have done way bigger mistakes in the past few years. Have they been broken up for that reason? Absolutely not. I'll go into other uh, small arguments, uh, additional arguments afterwards. But I hope I've given you already a, a brief teaser as to why there is no reason to break, break up Facebook so far. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. I think there are really three reasons why we should break up Facebook. And breaking it up faster is better, by the way. Number one is what you already pointed at, market forces. Adam Smith is called the father of economy, and he already said monopolies are bad for the economy for multiple reasons. And you can watch that in action when you watch how Facebook behaves. So number one reason, if you are the biggest player in the market, you can simply buy up any competition and then make a call if you continue supporting the, the direction or not. That's stifling competition by definition. Number two, uh, once, you, once you bought everyone and you're the largest player in the market, there's a networking effect. No one else can actually go around you. So you dominate the market beyond your actual segment. That's the second reason. And third one, uh, the market will not resolve it by itself. We have to consider uh, political action and uh, breaking up a company like this is not nothing else but a political action. And uh, the reason for, for why we should consider it is there is something called a natural monopoly. So at, as soon as you have something like public uh, infrastructure, for instance, there's a tendency to form that one big company, and that's a heavy call for regulation. So either we have to regulate companies like Facebook heavily, 
because they are something like that. But then we should consider basically running services like Facebook out of the government and not out of a private company. Or it's a private company, but then the call for breaking it up, be it fair or not, doesn't matter, uh, is actually something called by eco- called for by economists. Now, that's reason number one, economy. Reason number two, this is, large, uh, this is arguably the the single largest data pool on this planet about human behavior, human motivation, human psychology. Do you imagine, can you imagine how much of a honeypot that is for governments, for companies, for any entity really that has a desire to control people and control what people perceive and manipulate people? So we should have a strong interest in breaking up Facebook because right now they are a risk not only to democracy, which sounds kind of fuzzy anyway, they are literally the dominant force shaping our opinions and what we perceive in the online world. This is mind-boggling that we allow this to happen. And this is my number, my personal number one case for breaking up a company like Facebook in that sense. The third reason is a geographic one. And maybe if you, dear listener, if you're an American, then you're you're on the receiving end of that argument because Sebastian and I, we are Europeans here and we are the part of the world that has no Facebook or any other big internet company for that matter. And for regions like Europe, it may be even essential that a company like Facebook is put within limits. Because right now, uh, it's a US American dominated tool set that's power to America, which is maybe sometimes useful and good for America. But if we are really honest in our strive for free speech and democracy and freedom around the world, we have to ask ourselves if it's really, really that healthy to let one country, by extension, one set of governmental rules really orchestrate free speech and communication across the globe, across multiple nation states. And for as a European, I wish we had our own Facebook with just as much reach as Facebook and all players forced to interact with each other instead of building an island. So these are my three main reasons. This is my cause for breaking up Facebook. And now on to Sebastian. You bring up a lot of arguments. I'm going to try and and debunk uh, some, if not all, of your points. You talked about Facebook stifling competition, being the largest player in the field. And I would contend that's actually not correct. If you look at, let's say, video sharing, you have YouTube, um, which is strongly competing with Facebook. If you look at photo sharing, you have Instagram, uh, which is owned by Facebook, but you have also Pinterest, you have Google Photos. You have a number of other players. If you look at messaging, Facebook is not dominating in major markets like China. You have WeChat uh, not dominating in Japan either. So there's actually a lot of competition. And Facebook is probably not the largest player in many of those markets or even a single uh, product area if you look at uh, from that perspective versus the, the entire aggregate of the competition. You also mentioned in a related manner that it's the largest or dominant force of opinion or shaping up opinion. Likewise, what about Fox News? Uh, What about all these media companies which exist out there? Fair enough. Facebook is, again, very, very visible because it is one company. But you have hundreds, thousands of other companies out there also distributing news or so-called fake news and extreme opinions. So, again, emphasizing that Facebook would be the only offender in that field is actually missing the point. It, it's not just ma- missing the point. It's actually a massive mistake because then we don't look at the the rest of the iceberg. Facebook is just a tip. But you have so many other problems in a similar industry and other industries that just punishing Facebook would be a mistake. In fact, breaking up or antitrust regulation is not about pushing, punishing successful companies. It's about protecting the user. So this is where I would join you on this is about seeing what is the possible risks to users. But again, just having an emphasis on Facebook would be a mistake. You mentioned something about handing the keys over of regulation to Facebook. Well, even Facebook is asking for regulation. If you look at the the latest public discourse from the company executives, they are asking for regulation. They're not actually trying to shy away from it. It makes sense anyway for a company to work with lawmakers. They cannot do anything against it. So if the world really wants to tackle these problems, we really need to see Facebook in the, in the context of other companies which are evolving in a, in a similar field. There's Twitter, there's YouTube, there's Reddit, there's Fox News, there's many, many other. 
so I think there is a lot of reasons to say that we should not break up Facebook unless we have a healthy conversation about everything else that is happening in the industry and other industries. I'll finish off with one last remark, and this is my personal opinion, which may not have been voiced uh, in any of the opinion pieces online. Time will tell, but my expectation is that Facebook and its current format, the Facebook, the product, the newsfeed, et cetera, will actually not survive. Not because it will be broken up, but because I think and I believe people will get tired of using it. WhatsApp may remain, Instagram possibly too, even also Instagram potentially I'm not so sure about because of the overwhelming attempt for everyone to be, to be seen, to become a micro-influencer, and I think people get tired of it. Uh, and may shift to other platforms. So time will tell, but I actually don't think breaking up things will change anything, uh, will help in any way. And naturally, possibly Facebook, the product will die. So there's no reason, even from that perspective, to break it up. Final statements. Dirk goes first. Sorry to burst your bubble, Sebastian, you're not debunking my argument, because actually it's a bit of a straw man argument to compare Facebook to something like YouTube. And I compare to other places in this economy. Because, for instance, the publishing sector lost about half its jobs since, since 2001, and almost 70% of its revenues to Facebook. That's, for insta instance, stifling the economy. That's damaging. And that is because uh, investments into news coverage are directed towards content advertising on Facebook instead of investing in better news coverage and uh, instead of investing into reporters and editors. Aside from that, I still think one person, one company dominating the discourse of 2 billion people. It's just too much power. I'm very sorry. That may be market or unfair or yes, maybe breaking them up may cause several bigger companies to spark. Then we break them up again. But there is a limit to power that we should allow to form. And this is the main cause why I would break up Facebook, to be completely honest. Because everything else you could argue, well, maybe market eventually solves for it. But this one is actually not solvable by market. This is solvable by politics. Sebastian. In conclusion, Facebook has become an easy target. It's not the only offender in the privacy space and user protection or fake news space. It's not even the worst offender, I would contend. Uh, secondly, the issues are across industries, not even just big tech, but across multiple industries, the banking industry, telecom telecommunications, etc. And Facebook is certainly not guilty for all the hate that happens uh, in the world and the anger that people feel. Facebook is a successful company. Do we really want to break up successful companies which have been built in democracies trying to innovate on the internet when you have so much competition and trade war going on with countries which may not be as democratic? Is it really the time to break things up and instead of celebrating and trying to support and regulating an industry in a way that can make these companies more efficient and more privacy aware or whatever is needed to have more healthy democracies? And finally, my last point, which I made just before, was that I don't even think regulation, in this case, or breaking up a company will solve anything. If anything, Facebook may just die of its own death because people will shift to other platforms. So maybe it's just a, bit, a little bit like when, when the EU is regulating some industries and fining some companies for antitrust breaches. Does it really change anything? I'm not so sure. So I'm not sure regulation is the answer here as opposed to having a broader debate. So no, Facebook being broken up is not a solution. That was it. That was today's debate. Should we break up Facebook? I like how we always touch on uh, the broader scheme and sometimes even reference without realizing former debates. We had a debate in the past that was discussing if Facebook is dead already, right? Yes. So do you think Facebook is dead already? Seems like they are pretty healthy in terms of econo economical values right now. I, uh, I was surprised too with their financial results, but I still, I don't know, I have the, the feeling that, that people are just disgruntled increasingly with Facebook. They just don't like the product. They, they, they feel forced to use it more or less because everyone's on there. But 
if I project myself in the next decade, I, in fact, if I were at Facebook, I would already be thinking about acquiring other companies or, or finding a completely new version, revamping the product. I, I really don't think Facebook will be around as as the, the news feed as we know it in 10 or 20 years. But they kind of announced know. that, by the way. So they, they double down on their messenger they platform. To... They rewrite the Facebook platform itself. So that they they also, with Portal, they have one of these, uh, let's say, uh, living room infrastructures that they try to establish. So there are a couple of work streams that look exactly like what you suggest to kind of move away from the people communication platforms from the past. Fair enough, but in this case, I, I I think it would make if if Facebook does transform itself into something else, then I think it 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 uh, it removes the case for breaking it up. If if it's more under the surface or behind the scenes and it becomes more of a private thing, like a private messaging app or a private sharing space, which is what Zuckerberg said he's trying to get the company to evolve towards, then I don't know. I, I feel that it's going to be less in the in the public eye. So, you mentioned that people people have no alternative to having an account on Facebook. So, well, isn't that the case yes for no. breaking it up? No, well, have no. I didn't say no alternative. They feel that they have to be there. I'll give you. I'll give a number of examples. I mean, again, it, if you, um, this is maybe restricted to the to our Western Western Europe and America's world, right? But if you look at China, of course, people don't care about Facebook. If you look, if you look at Japan, nobody cares about Facebook. But there's this tendency uh, across some other non-Facebook apps that if you want to log in on their app, you need to have a Facebook account. This is annoying annoying to me. This is the only reason why I have Facebook, to be honest. Right? It's to be able to log in to other platforms which are using the Facebook API, the login API. No? You don't agree? I... There's a network effect, but if you people get tired and you come up with something which is substantially superior in terms of formatting, in terms of I think privacy, it's a... No? no. I do think it's a it's a question of critical mass, and I think Facebook is beyond that critical mass. So, um, for instance, right now I couldn't pry away from Facebook even if I wanted to, because uh, the majority of my extended family uses WhatsApp for communicating things and updates in the family. So either I can opt out of communicating in the family, or I'm bound to have a WhatsApp account. And through through this account, Facebook learns an awful lot about me and that's the the point that i was trying to make this is like the perfect scenario for uh for instance the nsa or plenty of other uh, companies and scenarios that uh, actually are happy that in the us where you have pretty open data protection practices to to start with you have one of the largest data collection on personal behavior and people's behavior online in the world and there is really no way to opt out of this that is not causing me pain right now. I think this is this is a risk for for conversations that we have. This is a risk for uh, for our freedom. And in reality, the events of the past two years kind of demonstrate that. I mean, Cambridge Analytica only was possible because there was that one place where all the data came together. And uh, there, I'm very sure there are other scenarios just like it. Just, a, I think just two or three months ago, Facebook had to admit that uh, several dozens of millions of passwords were sitting unencrypted in their data stores with, with employees having access to this. I mean, this is, a, this is a nightmare waiting to happen or a nightmare already happening without us seeing. And the only reason it is happening is because it's such a big, massive beast that we all use to standardize our communication. So two things, a smaller company can make the same mistake, right? The, having passwords in text file, this happens to so many different companies. It has nothing to do with size, right? The problem with the size is that the, the volume of the, of the breach could be much higher or the, or the potential breach could be much, much significant. But if you add up all the privacy issues and the lack of security measures of millions of companies around the planet, it comes, it comes back to the same problem. So again, I, this is why breaking up actually I don't think is is linked to solving the problem. Maybe it actually makes the problem even worse because you have less resources to tackle everything. If you're a company of 200 people, how do you deal with, how do you get the best security experts? You can't because they all go to, to Google or Facebook or the government or the NSA or whatever. Uh, so you're stuck. 
right? If you want to do your own solution. The second thing you mentioned, well, you know, they they make mistakes. Well, you can find them. I mean, Google, you know, Twitter and what well, Twitter not as far as I know. I don't know. Facebook is waiting for another fine. You can break the company. You don't even have to break it up. You can break the company, find it so much because it made so many mistakes that it goes bankrupt. I don't have a problem with that. If it's so bad and, and so then criminal. The next, and then the next company just uh, buys the data store that Facebook has accumulated and we go no, on having on, the on. problem. I don't think it's that easy. I'm not sure you can buy data from, of from a bankrupt company. Yeah, well, you, you, buy, you buy the company that lies dead in the water for, for less money than it's worth okay, and then you have fine. it. Assuming that's possible, uh, let's, let's say it is, then that new company, if it continues to do a bad job, likewise, will be fine. I mean, the, the, the fines are becoming substantial. I mean, I've, I'm shocked at, this, at the size of these fines. We're talking about billions of dollars. I mean, these companies are huge, but the, it's not a drop in the bucket anymore. And the, and the fact, I mean, there's this point of controversy that we still have between us and in general in the world is, what is the real power that Facebook has? Maybe that's actually another debate, because I, I want to think that The power is only, it's a bit like democracies. It's whatever the users or citizens allow that company or the country to have. And here is exactly the point. Um, first off, um, the argument you're making, sorry, I, I completely come to the opposite conclusion, not surprisingly. So the larger the, the potential data breach, the more risk there is and the more that's actually a cause to break it up because I'd much rather have small data leaks or smaller data leaks than the potential to leak the data and privacy of 2.5 billion people. But that aside, um, Facebook has the power and already is acting on that power to decide for us what we see. And either you're completely ignorant of the fact that marketing and political communication base is basing on this for all eternity because um, we, we are easy to manipulate once you have control over the, the things we see and hear. Everything we know about the world we learn from the media and all the media selection these days goes through algorithms controlled by Facebook. Or not all, but a significant chunk. And that is a hell lot of power. And this is not in the hands of the users of Facebook because it's it's not you, Sebastian, or me, Dirk, who can control what the algorithm is showing me. It's Mark Zuckerberg and his company that is controlling this. This is a, a real risk. This is a real power that Facebook has. And just because it feels like they are not really acting on it that obviously, it's still power that sits there. If the wrong person makes a wrong decision in the Facebook headquarters, it's the ultimate damage tool for, for people. And I do think we see, we see examples where Facebook made a difference in what topics made it on the agenda. Maybe. Maybe what you say is right, but let's look at something which probably affected you and me, and we don't even know it. Um, at least if, if our data was stolen. In Marriott, 500 million passport details, credit card details stolen. What does that mean? Should we break up the 6,000 hotels? Should they become independent so they don't share the same IT system? When, I mean, why, why are we having a debate about Facebook and not about Marriott hotels? Because if you have a hotel with their disconnected or non-centralized IT system, You could argue the same thing, that you'd rather have a smaller data breach. And we're not having this debate. So my point, my main point in this argument, the debate that we were having is, let's look at the broader industries, not just the big tech, but everything else, banking, telecommunications, hotels. And we have very similar issues. And what do we do there? Because they're less visible right now, because they're maybe less of a central pillar to economies or to the stock market, let's say, which has made so many people rich, by the way. That is, those who had enough money to build the stock market over the past decade. That it's that it's only because it, it is so visible that we're debating about Facebook or Google or, or YouTube, and that's that's my problem. It's just one, it's double standards. Right? I'm not a. You may you may have a point, but regardless of the point, it seems that we're just focusing on one when which is hiding. It's a tree in the forest. Even if Facebook did not exist, we'd have the same issues. Imagine if Facebook doesn't exist in the landscape. Russians would still, or the Russian government would still try to meddle with elections in any way, shape, or, or form. They were still trying to hack emails from what, whatever party. Yeah. Would you, you would still have fake news on Fox News or wherever else. I can decide to not go to Marriott, but to go to Hilton. But we just we just discussed uh, if in, if we don't exactly plan to move to China anytime soon, we cannot really decide to move off Facebook's reach. 
whether it's Marriott or Hilton is beyond the point. Th these hacks or these leaks or breaches or lack of security you, will happen. We are not discussing leaks. We are discussing, do you have an alternative? And I'm saying you have no alternative to Facebook. You're basically you forced to give... Which Come one? On videos. I mean, it, but it depends for what you want to do. So Snapchat um, turned down famously a quite steep offer from Facebook to be bought. So Facebook wanted to buy Snapchat and Snapchat said, thanks, but no thanks. What Facebook then did was copying the idea behind Facebook of having temporary messaging and uh, things that fade away. That's what's called Instagram Stories. And ever since, uh, Snapchat is declining and Instagram is uh, raising. And if I look at uh, what my... I have three teenagers and I'm pretty, pretty well aware of what's running on their phones. And two years ago, it was Snapchat all the way through. Snapchat is still on their phones, but they're using Insta, as they call it, like for everything else, and WhatsApp, by the way. So WhatsApp and Insta made the race right now. And why did they make the race? Because Facebook decided to use significant resource to simply copy what was a success model for Snapchat. And this is, again, um, if, you, if you follow the line of argument, the market will solve for it. What, what is it that Snapchat can do possibly to rival the type of uh, user networks Facebook has to offer? Maybe, but again, we're breaking things up or removing Facebook uh, or, or having Zuckerberg have less than the majority of the controlling power of Facebook would change anything. I claim that no. Why? If you have shareholders which are controlling Facebook and that shareholder is, is not Zuckerberg in, his, in the majority of the shares, they want to make money. They would make and push the company to make the exact same decision to merge and to share data. The incentive is money. The problem is not Facebook, is the way we build comp companies and incentive to build to generate more money. Secondly, if Instagram is independent, nothing prevents in Instagram from also copying Snapchat and probably would have done the same thing. I, I don't know. We don't know because Instagram is part of Facebook. But they see Snapchat. They see Snapchat as a as a competitor, and they would probably still copy the features. I don't think it has anything to do with breaking up uh, 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 Facebook from WhatsApp from Instagram. And I don't think every decision comes from Zuckerberg. Like I, hey, there's 38,000 employees. You have VPs. You have executives. You have engineers. They come up with features. We know we know how it works, right? You have also bottom-up innovation, and and you have these committees and decisions and and suggestions. I really don't think it's about breaking up. I really don't think it would actually change anything. All right. We don't know. We are, but we know that we are out of time now. We, we that, that we do know. <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting that even in our discussion, we still seem to uh, disagree or, or at least continue to debate. It's it's rarely the case. Most often, we come to uh, some form of consensus. Yeah. Only in the Christchurch video thing and this time with Facebook, <laughs> we are we are actually on opposite end. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you so much for debating this with me. It was Likewise. eye opening and interesting. Let's see what our listeners think. And you can vote online on our debate episode page. Thumbs up if uh, Dirk convinced you that Facebook should be broken up and if I convinced you with my arguments you vote thumbs down simple easy yeah and we dominate right. the space of cool debating podcasts these days so be careful <laughs> maybe we should yeah, be broken up <laughs> well if we're broken up what, what happens I debate with myself <laughs> I finally yeah. win yeah we, 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 we fall back into the state we had before Ar argue with ourselves and in the end uh, agreeing with our position <laughs> <laughs> And the bubble just popped. <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful day, Sebastian. Thank you. Likewise to you. Bye. Bye-bye.